When I was a high school physics teacher, one of my favorite things was to teach my students that there was no such thing as subtraction, no such thing as multiplication, and no such thing as division. There is only addition. Inevitably, the next day, a few students would return to class with stories of trying to enrich their parents' minds with this amazing revelation and how the parents had told them to come back to school and inform me that I am a complete moron. I really do miss teaching high school. Really, I do. But here's the best part. I am right. Well, to an extent. Maybe, quote, only addition, end quote, is the wrong way to put it. It would be more accurate to say only combination. And that is what this video is all about. How a computer performs addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division with binary numbers. And how it is all just additive combinations of binary numbers. So let's get down to it. As far as I am aware, all computers use two's complement to combine numbers. And after you watch this video, I hope it becomes apparent why. Just as a quick refresher, a two's complementary number is calculated by making the leading bit negative and then adding all the bits after. So here's an example with a 4-bit number, 3, and its 2 complement of negative 3. In the positive, we make the lead bit negative, but it is 0, so our answer comes out to a positive number. 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 0 equals 3. Now its 2's complement actually has a negative leading bit, 2 to the 3rd. So adding these, we get negative 2 to the 3rd plus 2 to the 2nd plus 2 to the 0. This gives us negative 3. Easy peasy, right? Okay, review time is over. Let's talk about arithmetic. We're going to start with addition. And there are basically four sets of numbers that can be added. Number one, we can add two positive numbers. Number two, we can add two negative numbers. Number three, we can add one positive and one negative where the magnitude of the positive is greater. And number four, we can add one positive and one negative where the magnitude of the negative number is greater. And we're going to do an example of each so we can see how the result turns out to be the correct answer. There's only one situation where we will get the incorrect answer and it only applies to adding two positive or two negative numbers. So let's look at those first. Let's add two 8-bit positive numbers. We will place the equivalent decimal form next to the binary so we can see how this gives us the same answer. So here we have 7 plus 4. Simply add these two binary numbers like we have learned before. And there we go. We have 11, an uncomplemented binary. Now let's add two negative numbers. Here we have negative 5 plus negative 9. These are in 2's complement, of course, because they are negative. Again, we're going to add these numbers like we have done before. Here, we have a ninth bit that was carried from our last bit of addition. This carry bit can just simply be discarded. The leading bit is 1, so our answer is negative, as it should be. So let's check our answer. Alright, good. It looks like we have negative 14. Okay. So those are correct answers when adding numbers with like signs. But we can also get wrong numbers, like when we try and add 125 and 58. The sum of these two numbers is 183. But you will notice that the binary sum has a most significant bit of 1, making it a negative number. This is due to something called overflow. Our magnitude has 7 bits. So the largest positive number we can code is 2 to the 7th minus 1, which is 127. Any sum larger than this will cause a bit to carry over to the 2 to the 8th's place, which causes our sum to flip negative. Any sum of negative numbers that will cause the magnitude to be larger than 128, which is any negative number smaller than negative 128, in other words, will force an overflow condition. So when adding numbers in 2's complement, it's important that we make sure that we account for possible overflow conditions and avoid those. Now let's look at 
one positive and one negative where the magnitude of the positive is greater. Here we have 15 plus negative 6. When these two numbers are added, the sign bit is positive. This is always the case when adding one positive and one negative and the magnitude of the positive is greater. It's also impossible to have an overflow condition here. Switching to a situation where the negative number has a greater magnitude, such as 16 plus negative 24, we can see that the sign bit is 1, making the number negative. Again, this is always the case when the magnitude of the negative number is greater. It is also impossible to have an overflow condition. So those are examples of how to perform addition. Now for subtraction. But remember how I said there's no such thing as subtraction? Reflect on the previous addition problems. See if you can figure out what I mean. I'm sure many of you figured this out from the addition examples we just had. Remember how plus a negative means subtract and minus a negative means plus? Remember that rule from basic algebra? Well, if we work those backwards, we're always adding, even when subtracting. And this is what I mean when I say there's no such thing as subtraction. Let's look at the example 12 minus 8. What we actually have here, and how the computer is going to interpret this, is 12 plus negative 8. So this is the addition of one positive and one negative number, where the positive has a greater magnitude. Performing the math, and there we go. We have the difference, which is 4. That brings us to multiplication. This is fairly simple to break down into addition only, since we all learned in second or third grade that multiplication is a way to quickly add repeated numbers. But obviously, adding the same number a huge number of times can be quite time consuming. So we can perform multiplication in two's complement binary using partial products, just like we do in decimal. First, let's identify the parts of multiplication problems. The first number is the multiplicand. This is the number that's going to be added repeatedly. The multiplier tells us how many times we are going to add the multiplicand. Finally, the product is the solution. Okay, remember these terms as we're going to be using them a lot. Now, here are the steps to partial products in two's complement binary. First, determine if the signs of the multiplicand and the multiplier are the same or different. This will determine if the product is positive or negative. Step two, change any negative numbers to their uncomplemented form. Step 3. Generate the partial products just like you would in decimal. If the multiplier is a 1, the partial product is the same as the multiplicand, and if the multiplier is 0, the partial product is 0. Step 4. Add the partial products to get the final product. Step 5. If the sign of the product determined in step 1 is negative, then take the 2's complement of the product. If it was positive, then the answer is in its true form. Then attach the sign bit to this number. So let's look at an example. For simplicity, we're not going to worry about an overflow condition for this problem. So our two numbers are coded in 8-bit 2's complement and are 83 and negative 59. The answer, however, is going to be larger than 8 bits for demonstration purposes. So here we have 83 times negative 59. So our answer will be negative, noted. Next, we need to change negative 59 to its 2's complement. There we go. Okay, now we stack these two and multiply like normal, finding the partial products. So here's the first partial product, and here is the second. Let's go ahead and add the two to keep the math simple. The third partial product is all zeros, so adding that is easy. Next is the fourth partial product, and let's add that. All right, the fifth 
partial product and let's add that one the sixth partial product and notice that all these partial products are just the multiplicand we add that one the seventh is zero and when we add to get our final sum we have a final product we're not done yet so far we have done the first four of the five steps to performing this the last step is to take the two's complement since we know from step one our answer is negative now we tack on the sign bit from step one which is one and there we have it if we math this number out we find that this is the two's complement binary number negative four thousand eight hundred ninety seven which is the product of eighty three and negative fifty nine finally we come to division if multiplication is repeated addition then division is repeated subtraction which is actually addition <laughs> okay but seriously division problems have three parts well four if you count the remainder which we won't for now the three parts are the dividend which is the number to be divided up the divisor the number doing the dividing and the quotient which is the answer let's look at a decimal example 21 divided by 7. 21 is the dividend, 7 is the divisor. We subtract 7 from 21 to get 14, then we subtract 7 from 14 to get 7. Finally, we subtract 7 from 7 to get 0. The quotient is the number of times we performed this subtraction cycle, which is 3. So 21 divided by 7 is 3. The subtraction is over when we get to zero or a negative number. Now, when two binary numbers are divided, both the dividend and the divisor must be in uncomplemented form, much like when performing multiplication. There are three steps to performing division, and here they are. Step one, determine the sign of the quotient. Opposite signs will yield a negative quotient, and same signs will yield a positive quotient. The quotient will begin as a positive number. Step two, subtract the divisor from the dividend using two's complement addition to get the first partial remainder. We add one to the quotient. If the remainder is positive, go to step three. If the remainder is zero or negative, the division is complete. Step three, Subtract the divisor from the partial remainder and add 1 to the quotient. If the result is positive, repeat step 3. If the result is 0 or negative, the division is complete. Let's see what this loop looks like in action with the following example. The signs of both numbers are positive, so the quotient will be positive. The quotient starts off at 0. Now. Let's subtract the divisor from the dividend using two's complement addition. This is the same as dividend plus the negative of the divisor. So we need the two's complement of the divisor to add to the dividend. The carry is discarded and we have our first partial remainder. It's positive, so we need to keep going. So let's increase the quotient by one and perform the next subtraction. This time, the dividend is the partial remainder and the divisor is the two's complement of the divisor and we get our second positive partial remainder. Let's bump the quotient by one and perform the next subtraction. There we go. And we have a third positive partial remainder. Quotient gets increased by one. And let's go one more time. Boom. We now have a zero remainder. So our quotient gets bumped up by one, one last time, and our work is done. The answer is 100, or four in decimal. And that's good, because the numbers we divided were 100 divided by 25. So that is two's complement arithmetic. I hope we all learned that there is nothing in arithmetic but addition. Actually, I hope we all learned how binary arithmetic and two's complement 
is not too awful, and actually works out well when dealing with both positive and negative numbers. Like all things mathematic, it takes repetition to get really good at it. So try and work some problems on your own to really get these steps down. Next, we're going to tackle hexadecimal numbers. We're going to count, convert, and do some arithmetic. Once we have finished with hexadecimal numbers, octal numbers will be the last non-decimal number system we will learn. By the time we do those octal numbers, hopefully, you'll be picking up on the patterns behind the conversions between number systems and how to perform simple arithmetic. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so I'll see you in the next video.